On the news this morning, Arambra Deputy Governor encourages youths, others to embrace farming for food sufficiency. Arambra State Government launches Operation Show Your Building Permit. Federal Government deploys policemen in major cities ahead of one million man march. And on the foreign scene, plane crash in Brazil, Sao Paulo, state kills a 61 persons on board. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saluda has come for a turnaround, maintenance of the Anambra state economy, and promotion of Kurt Ibu Valleys. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Chidim Oranwa. The Yanambra State Deputy Governor, Dr. Onyeka Chuku Ibe Zim, has assured that the government of Professor Chuku Masaludo will sustain effort towards ensuring the realization of its target of empowering every youth in the state with minimum of two skills. Deputy Governor Ibe Zim gave the assurance during the flag of of the second batch of the One Youth a Two Skill Initiative at the International Conference Center, OCA. Government House Correspondent Emmanuel Okunkwo tells us more. The Soluda administration is poised to fulfilling its promise of raising not less than 1,000 millionaires every year in the state. Said that the various schemes introduced by the government, including the One Youth Two Skills, the Agri Initiative themed Operation Farm to Feed, among others, are for the youth to become self reliant and help in solving the unemployment problem in Nigeria. Deputy Governor Ibezin, while saying that the present administration prioritizes human capital development in its quest of building the future of the state emphasized on the need for the beneficiaries of this second phase of the one youth two skill scheme to be serious throughout the training disclosing that at the end there will be startup packages for those that did well in the training the deputy governor encouraged youths and others to go into farming for food sufficiency re-emphasizing governor salute those warning that people who fail to farm on their empty lands across the state will soon lose them to people who may decide to to farm on them as government will revoke the certificate of occupancy and give it to the person who has been farming them for three years and above. It's the way to go, the green revolution. I tell the youths, Afnanyekwe, go and ask. Ask your fellow youths who have benefited where they are now. So don't just wait. Key in now. It's better done now than never. In an interview, the state chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA, Chief Ifatu Biokoye, lauded the exemplary and visionary style of Governor Soludo, noting that the One Youth Two Scale Scheme creates substantial hope for the youths and solves unemployment problem confronting them in this present Nigeria, and expressed happiness that the creditable performance of Governor Soludo has continued to distinguish APCA among other political parties. And when you are coming to talk about renewed hope it must have substance become part of the solution to our situation mr governor coming up with this is an encouragement shows a man a leader who has a clear vision of how to solve problems. On their parts, the national president of Anambra State Association of Tan Unions, Barista Taito Sabudo, and the traditional ruler of Ifitedunu, Igwe Meka Iluno, commended Governor Soludo for being consistent with the scheme, which they said has emancipated a lot of youths from poverty, crime, and criminality, pointing out that when the youths are empowered, that the society would be a peaceful and livable place. As according to them, youths are leaders of tomorrow. Contributing, the Transition Committee Chairman for Oka South Local Government Area, Prince Chine Duokafo, and a member of the Abga Board of Trustees, Chief Major Ume, said that the scheme is worth emulating by other states in Nigeria as the impact cannot be overemphasized, calling on youths in Anambra to shun social vices and seize the opportunity to learn a lifelong skills and become useful to themselves and the society at large. From International Convention Center in Oka, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo reporting for ABS News. 
in a bid to restore sanity and orderliness in the building sector, the Edinburgh State Government has launched Operation Show the Building's Permit, a policy aimed at curbing the menace of illegal structures in the state and its attendant issues. The Development Control Enforcement Team, led by the Chairman, Anambra State Physical Planning Board, Barrister Chike Madwekwe, embarked on the exercise recently. Kevin House correspondent, G.K. Abana, has details. Guys, was carried out at Waliwa Fege in Onicha South Council area, where illegal perimeter fences and shanties were removed. Barrister Madwekwe explained that the operation is designed to enforce compliance with building codes and regulations because many builders and developers have been constructing without approval, thereby taking the government for granted. While contributing this to land disputes or lack of proper documentation, the chairman expressed concern over the financial burden of enforcement on the government stressing that those involved will be arrested and prosecuted and emphasized the importance of a self-building environment pointing out that the governor's vision is for an orderly society we have a list we are compiling we are giving them a window bring your building permits if you don't bring it after the window we will enforce Highlighting the challenges faced by the enforcement in a previous visit to the site, Barrister Madwekwe said that the team encountered resistance from TOGS and with the launch of Operation Show Your Building Permits, the government has suspended all building projects requiring builders to show their permits for validation. 31st of October. Of October. Yes. October. Anybody, we are, we are giving them the grace. They will not pay penalty. Bring your documents. We will look at it. It is not in order and it can be approved because there are two different things. There are things you have built that are not approvable. There are those that can be approved. Those ones that can be approved will be revalidated and will be issued an approval. The ones that can be approved will be removed. The operation is expected to be replicated in other areas of the state, making a new era in building regulation enforcement in Anambra State. The Nigeria Plastic Solution Activity and the Anambra State Waste Management Authority, Aswama, have held a plastic waste recycling engagement for stakeholders in the state. The stakeholders' engagement, which took place in Orca, was targeted to highlight the shared commitment to creating a cleaner, greener, and more sustainable Anambra State through strategic partnerships and innovative waste management solutions. Correspondent Chibuzo Obirike filed on this report. Attracted over 160 stakeholders, including government officials, community leaders, environmental experts, and representatives from various organizations. The Nigeria Plastic Solutions Activity, an initiative led by TechnoServe, has the United States Agency for International Development and Coca-Cola Foundation as partners. It is dedicated to intercepting plastic waste at the source and transforming it into valuable resources, creating jobs and fostering sustainable communities, and exemplify the commitments of USAID, Coca-Cola Foundation, and TechnoServe to environmental sustainability and economic development in Nigeria. TechnoServe itself is a leading international development non-profit that harnesses the power of private sector to help beneficiaries lift themselves out of poverty. Nigeria contributes significantly to global plastic waste with just 12% being recycled, which has made plastic pollution a major social problem in the country, says the country director of TechnoServe Nigeria. Adesuwa Akimbora at the stakeholders' engagements, represented by the senior program manager, Bennett Obasiohia. Akimbora said that this is why the Nigeria Plastic Solutions Activity aims at recycling 49,000 metric tons of plastic waste in two years, with 29,000 tons targeted from Anambra, which is expected to boost local economics and create sustainable livelihoods. The TechnoSav boss stated that the vision can only be achieved through strategic collaboration across all levels of leadership urging stakeholders to work together as the sources of the initiative depends on collective action we therefore use this opportunity to send a clear call to all stakeholders in a number of states to work with us in this concerted effort to clear plastic waste from our streets and waterways this collaboration is critical to ensuring the success of the pro project and in attaining the ultimate goal of protecting the environment and providing jobs 
and keeping our children healthy. I am confident that our discussions will be fruitful and pave the way for impactful actions that will benefit our state. We are excited about these possibilities that this partnership unfolds and we are committed to working closely with you to ensure the success of this initiative. The stakeholders' engagement featured paper presentation from the Chairman, Governing Board of Aswama, Professor Emma Ezewaji, a Senior Business Advisor, Mr. Franklin Mwibe, and Reverend Father Jude Ezeanokwase. Other presentations were also made by the Waste Pickers Association of Nigeria, the Anambra State Waste Recyclers Association, and Plastic Aggregators. The managing director of Aswama, Mr. Mike Ozemena, also appreciated the partners and stakeholders for their support in Oka Chibuzo Bidiki, ABS News. The 18th Obaroda Assistant Women's Conference has ended with a call on Christians to always seek the will of God in all their endeavors. Bishop of Awaro Diocese, Right Reverend Prosper Ama, made the call during the conference held at St. James Anglican Church, Iowa Odebe, in Obaro Council area. We have details of this report from our studio. Right Reverend Ama, who noted that the will of God remains the ultimate, regretted that a lot of Christians have neglected to seek the will of God concerning their lives, which has resulted to a series of problems and challenges facing them while calling on political leaders to always seek the will of God for the good of the masses. The will of God remains the ultimate. Once anyone goes by that option, the will of God, God takes responsibility. Earlier in her presidential address with the team, that will be done, oh Lord, not mine, the president of Obaruda Sound Men Conference, Dr. Mrs. Uche Ama, challenged mothers to cultivate the life of prayer, study the word of God, and be committed to the things of the Lord for the will of God to be manifested in their lives. Dr. Ama commended Governor Soludo for rebuilding Opoku into a new heaven and for other massive road construction projects going on in various parts of the state. The Lord gave us a successful conference as compared to the previous ones. We had so many improvements in all units of the Mother's Union. In her speech, the president of Women's Ministry, province of the Niger, and Oka Diocese, Dr. Mrs. Mata Ibezim, commended Dr. Mrs. Ama for delivering an address which she described as apt, considering the situation of the country. Dr. Ibezim also called on mothers to always seek the face of God to know his will concerning their families and endeavors in order to have a sense of fulfillment, spiritual growth, and drive of the Holy Spirit. The Transition Committee Chairman of Barrow Council Area, Mr. Franklin, Mwadialo explained that the will of God must prevail in whatever one is struggling to achieve in life and called on the people of the council area to exercise patience as the government of Soludo has come to alleviate their plight, adding that he will ensure that every family in Obaro council area receive their fair share from the government. The chairperson of the planning committee of the conference and a former special advisor to the governor on education, Dame Chinyere Mbakwe, noted that the will of God is supreme in every life endeavors, challenging mothers who are home builders to allow the will of God to be done in their families by being prayerful. So the message I have to give to the public, especially the women, is for them to know that everything you are doing, make sure that that thing is the will of God. Some of the delegates at the conference, including Mrs. Ada Anugo and Mrs. Esther Okafo, thanked God for his successful conference, commending their president, Dr. Mrs. Ama, for the world chosen team and promised to leave out what they have learned at the conference. High point of the conference was the presentation of an award of Deborah of our time to Dame Mbakwe and presentations by the women of the diocese from Iowa Odebe. Obaro Council area, Emengino Asadebe, ABS News. Hundreds of policemen and security operators have been deployed in major cities across the country as organizers of the End Bad Governors protest prepare for a one million man march. The protest, is scheduled to last for 10 days and expected to climax today, has been marred by killings and attacks on protesters and journalists. 
The nationwide protests are demanding reversal of the fuel subsidy and removal, an increase in the minimum wage of 250,000 naira, and an end to bad governance among all the issues. Although the protests appear to have lost esteem in some parts of the country, momentum was sustained in states like Kanu, Kaduna, Rivers, and Bauchi. The organizing groups threatened to lock down the entire country to press him their demand, other than that President Bola Tinibu's Sunday speech was not convincing. Tinibu had, in a televised statewide broadcast, begged the protesters to end the rallies, asking for patience to face the country's problem. And on the foreign scene, a plane has crashed in the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo, killing all 61 people on board. Viopass Airlines said the twin-engine tuba prop was flying from Cascavel in the southern state of Parana to Guralos Airport in Sao Paulo City when it came down in the town of Veneto. The ATR-72500 was carrying 57 passengers and four crew. Local authorities said there was no survivors. Brazil's president, Luiz Inacio Lula da Silva, expressed solidarity with the families and friends of the victims, while Sapolio's state governor, Tassicio Gomez de Fritas, declared three days of mourning. The authorities said the flight recorders had been retrieved. ATR, the French-Italian plane marker, said it will cooperate with the investigation. And our sports, the quartet of Emmanuel Ojeli, Ezekiel Nitaniel, Dubem Amene, and Chidi Okeze have been disqualified from the men's 400 meters relay at the Paris 2024 Olympics. The men's team has finished second in the semi final heat with a season best of 259.81. However, the referee disqualified to Nigeria when one of them impeded a South African athlete following a changeover. Consequently, the South African men took the sport to the final. Botswana, the bronze medalist at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, finished first in their beat and overall with a top time of 257.76. They all will be joined by Great Britain, the United States, Japan, France, Belgium, Zambia, Italy, and South Africa. And that's it on the news this morning. But before we go, a quick reminder that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any parts of the world by liking our Facebook page. Follow us on an Umbra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on X at ABS Radio TV. And on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.abs Radio Television Orca. And now the main points again. Adam Deputy Governor has encouraged the youth, others to embrace farming for food sufficiency. An Amber State Government has launched Operation Show Your Building Permit. Federal Government has deployed policemen in major cities ahead of one million men march. I told you on the foreign scene that plane crash in Brazil, Sao Paulo, has killed 61 persons on board. Before we go, a quick reminder that Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround, maintenance of the Anambra state economy, and promotion of core evil values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. And that's it on the breakfast news this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chidema Oranwa. Good morning. <laughs>